Welcome back, friends, to the shop. Today we're going to be taking a look at the Husky Fowler's Belt, or as my Swedish wife would put it, Husqvarna, and try to justify its outrageous $200 price tag. I was getting ready to completely uh, destroy this thing in this review when I was unboxing it, but it actually kind of brings up a cup or, or, or some concepts that are very interesting, although I'm not a big fan of the way that it's executed. Okay, so what do you get, what do you get here for $200? We'll start from the left to right. Well, the concept that I'm talking about, and which I'm very familiar with as I'm getting older, it's harder and harder to pick up things off the ground. Right? Those of you guys that do firewood and are getting older can kind of relate. So my solution to the problem <laughs> about <laughs> 10 years ago, you know, when you're younger, when you're young and you're in your 20s and 30s, you don't think about anything about picking things up off the ground. It's just so easy. It just gets harder as you get older. But my solution has been uh, using picaroons. Um, I use them. Sometimes I use two. If I'm moving a lot of firewood to be able to reach down, go kathunk, kathunk, and, and use these as handles to move it around, uh, it's been very helpful. So that's kind of, that's kind of a workaround uh, that, that I've come up with. Well, the Swedes have taken a very different uh, idea, and you know, they're all about safety and proper ergonomics. No one's more safety, than, safety conscious than the Swedes. Uh, but what they have here is a, um, well, just a little mini log grappler, which is kind of an interesting design because these here, I've seen these used in the and they used to be used more than they do now before hydraulics, but gigantic versions of these where essentially what it works, how they would do it is they would have these huge for, forged, um, I don't know what they call them, these grabbers, and then they would hook them to a chain and, and the harder they pull, uh, the more first force they exert on the points and that way they could drag things around. Clever design, this is just a little mini version of them. High quality, very nice, made in Sweden. Uh, but the idea is, is you can use these in tandem uh, to move your firewood around where you don't have to you know, try to reach down and get a grab on things. You can hook it with this, hook it with this, and, and move it around. We'll, we'll test it here at the, towards the end of the video. So you have your, your left and right scabbards here uh, for those guys. So I, I, kinda, I, kinda, I think that's kind of cool. I appreciate that concept. Now, of course, no fowler's belt's complete with, uh, without a, um, uh, a logging tape. Uh, if you're not familiar with logging tapes, uh, you need to be able to know, you know, when you're when you're cutting timber, you know, what particular length the sawmill wants for different things. And so you have to have a tape on you because you can't guess it. This is a tape I've never seen before, which to me looks very similar to the traditional American Spencer tape um, that I uh, uh, have uh, that I've had showed for years, which I enjoy so much. But it doesn't feel like as good a quality. Uh, I had someone, a couple people wrote me and told me how much better these were than the Spencers. You know, just looking at it, uh, I don't think so. <laughs> no, they're not. I mean, this is mostly all plastic um, and some very thin aluminum on it. Um, the front, you know, the front foot of this is, is actually a fabric, uh, which I don't, I don't really understand what that's for. Uh, that's riveted on. How long is that going to last, right? Uh, not very long. One thing that they did do right was this little hook. A very nice little hook on a detent that you can run it both ways for sticking in the log versus the traditional way of using the horseshoe uh, nail. But uh, so that's, I'm sure it would work, um, but it's definitely not as cool. We have, um, well, this is kind of interesting. So a kit for first aid supplies, but a very, but not really enough room to put first aid supplies in. Well, we're going to need a tourniquet and we're going to need it an Israeli bandage. So here's the question. Will those two things uh, fit in this very, uh, you know, and I, I even go so far as to carry uh, four things. You know, I've got a quick clot, uh, Israeli bandage, and a small set of trauma shears. Uh, so at minimum, you would want to have this and a tourniquet. So is that going to fit in there? I guess it will, uh, kind of. Are you going to be able to get it? I guess the positive side of it is, it is this material will be waterproof now and then again it won't. Looks like you got cutouts here for all that stuff. How well is this stuff going to hold up with files going through it? Well, I don't think it's going to hold up at all, uh, to be honest with you. I mean, it's just, it, this would need to be either aluminum or leather. And, and the fact that it's not, and the fact also that these are sticking out in the bottom is very dangerous. That's why I don't work with a file. Now this is where it really gets bad. So here on our $200 Fowler's Belt, I can deal with the plastic, I can deal with all that stuff because it does have some nice hardware and, 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 and some interesting materials. But this here seems to me to be nothing more than just um, kind of a packing material. All right, guys, let's try this out, see how it compares up against the, uh, the old picaroon style. 
So, uh, well, there's plenty of belt there. I have a 32 inch waist and I do have a couple holes left over there. Lots of tail left over in case you're a larger size guy, it should work. Um, so it's actually, it's pretty comfortable. It's very light. These things really intrigue me. Um, if that's going to be something that's, it's going to be usable. I just don't know. It's a little, the whole thing's a little bit weird. I don't know if I would wear this out in public. I mean, it's kind of a, I feel like I got a big beaver tail flapping back there. Uh, tape measure's in a good spot. I mean, it's pretty non-intrusive. I really like the weight. Uh, that, that's a nice thing. You don't, you don't actually don't even really feel it, but it is weird. Let's try that tape out. See how that works. I, I do like the, the way they've done a hook on there. It's pretty nice. I mean, it's uh, just what we we expect. These are the interesting things. So how would you set these up? So I mentioned Fowler's belt. This is not actually a Fowler's belt configuration because you're not going to use these hooks on big timber, right? I mean, maybe for an East Coast guy and you don't cut anything bigger than like a Presto log, this might be right up your alley. I mean, that is very handy and you got a lot nicer handle than trying to, you know, to get down underneath of it. You know, at the end of a long day, if you can save your back and not have to get up and down so often, it helps. This is a great uh, tool, this little grabber here, actually. I really like, you can uh, move stuff around. Okay, and you always have it on you. I guess that's the thing. I, it's you know, not as bad as I thought. Now, how about the old school way? The old double pickaroo, and this is what I usually, this is actually an axaroon. Uh, I like this for, uh, the dug fur is so grainy that when I'm using the wood splitter, you know, you get those strings that want to always act up on you. And I'm using this instead of having my hand in with the splitter, I can flip it and I can chop those. That's why I had this made. But, uh, you know, in the past, I would have just done this, grabbed one of these guys, or probably use my heavier one. This is a much bigger log, but I found it to be pretty good to move stuff around, but it's not on you, you know, so you're always, you're always looking for it. And now I have an ax here too, for those little pesky, pesky jobs, chopping things. So what's my take here? Well, it, you know, it's interesting. It's an interesting concept with a grabber. This grabber is actually pretty nice. And I think it comes out of the style of logging that, that they, it's a Swedish company. They probably design it, do their own R&D in Sweden. You know, have smaller stuff, a lot of thinning, a lot of, you know, small poles and things like I just show, showed you. It's pretty good for that. It's pretty handy. Okay, final thoughts here on the, on the Husky Fowler's belt. You know, I'd have to say, it, I'm, I'm going to say that it's, one of the worst chainsaw accessories uh, that I've looked at in 2019, just because of the cost of it uh, and, and what you get. Uh, the only thing that I, I mean, that I really, really like about it is, is I like this grabber deal. This is something that I would actually use and the sheath that they've made for it is quite excellent as well. It's very thin, very light. It's gonna be tough. Even if that um, plastic or that packing foam deal, you know, falls off there, which it will, I don't know that you've really lost anything. You're gonna be wearing it on the outside of your chainsaw chaps or pants anyway, so I think that that's just not really necessary. But at $200, I'm gonna say that's one of the worst chainsaw accessories, uh, because just because of the cost. Not that it doesn't work, not that it's not kind of innovative, uh, but it's just too darn expensive uh, for some relatively cheap materials. Let me just give you an example. If you want something that uh, is really nice that will last you your whole life you'll be able to hand down to your family uh, let's price out mine right okay so I'm not going to include the axe though are we <laughs> that might take us over uh, so let's see so we've got a belt here so all this stuff is from Grizzly Peak Enterprises my friends up in Idaho which make the best axe scabbards in the world uh, go talk to those guys I'll put a link to their website not affiliated um, they just um, are, make good products um, this axe scabbard right here so you can get this belt the ring belt with the aluminum holes in it, which is nice, you can hang stuff off of it. And then an axe scabbard of any size you want. Um, the belt is about $19, the axe scabbard is about $19, $40 for the belt and scabbard, right there, right? So that's a pretty good deal. Uh, you're gonna have um, your loggers tape, 
You should be able to find these for about $50, $65 or so. Your chainsaw tool, that's you're going to have that already. You know, it's going to come with your chainsaw tool. But I mean, for basically getting the same thing minus the tongs, but what did these tongs cost? So we're, you know, we're at like 60, what, 40 bucks or no, 50? Let's say 100 bucks. Let's say half price. We're at half price basically what we have here uh, if you, you got yourself just a moderate em empty IFAC bag, you know, just to compare apples to apples. So like half price. And then you've got a real Spencer logging tape. You've got a really good leather belt that's going to age and fit mold to your body and just be nice to work with. You're going to have an awesome axe scabbard. You get the whole thing for half the price. And you're not going to look like a European which is what not what we want at all is it so, <laughs> i don't i'd like to see <laughs> i'd like to see a dude show up to a pacific northwest logging camp uh, with one of the <laughs> i'm not going to be the guy i'll tell you that so <laughs> so i guess that's kind of my take interesting idea what what would i do with it to be honest with you i'll probably take this little guy off um, and, um, and thread that onto my belt <laughs> cuz i i like that uh, that grabber hook and it's made in sweden very nice. That's the best part of it, but it's just too expensive. If this were a hundred dollar deal, uh, maybe, but uh, at two hundred dollars, um, not a chance. That's absolutely ridiculous. All right, well, thanks for watching. This was a uh, requested by one of my subscribers. You know who you are, so uh, thanks for the idea. Kind of a cool concept, something interesting to look at how things are done in uh, in uh, foreign places. And uh, that's it. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your family. Be safe tonight. It's Christmas Eve, Christmas, New Year's Eve tonight. Um, and actually, it might be a good time to uh, give up drinking, huh? I haven't uh, been drinking since uh, last summer, and it's been um, the best, one of the best decisions I've ever made. Um, I'll do an update on that um, coming up soon. So thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families, and we'll see you guys on the next video.